Hey everyone, my name is Jason Rylands. I'm a senior specialist at AWS for our hybrid edge solutions. I'm really excited to have Santiago join us today from Abu Dhabi. Um, Santiago, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, thanks Jason, thanks for having me here. Uh, I'm Santiago Freitas. I'm the head of enterprise architecture at First Abu Dhabi Bank. Fantastic, mate. Um, thanks for being with us today. So uh, first question, um, could you just tell us a little bit about First Abu Dhabi Bank? Yeah, sure. So uh, First Abu Dhabi Bank, you know, by short, for short, FAB, FAB, uh, is the UAE largest bank and one of the safest uh, financial institutions. Uh, we are focused on uh, corporate banking, investment banking, and into the consumer banking uh, as well, personal banking uh, uh, services. Uh, we headquartered in Abu Dhabi uh, in the UAE, but we have a network that spans uh, five continents. And uh, we focus on providing uh, global relationships uh, for our corporate customers, uh, as well as uh, for providing service for our investment banking, as well as our personal slash consumer banking uh, uh, customers. Both uh, we leverage uh, the presence in the UAE as well as the global network to help our customers do business uh, in the UAE, uh, in the Gulf, uh, as well as uh, abroad internationally as well. Fantastic. Thanks for that. Um, so to, to move on, um, just to get a little bit of background, you know, why did first Abu Dhabi Bank choose to build its applications on AWS? Maybe you can give us a little bit of, of, of background on that. Yes, yeah, sure. So uh, we strive to be a digital leader uh, in the banking uh, sector. Our goal, primary goal is to be the most customer friendly, customer centric uh, bank and, and really build experiences that help our customers grow uh, their uh, uh, grow you know, their wealth, manage it as efficiently as possible. And to do that, we had, we embarked into, into a journey to really to modernize our technology stack. Uh, and we, for the last uh, over two years now, we have taken a, a, a cloud force, a public cloud first uh, approach. Uh, if you look at, you know, historically, we had 100% of our uh, uh, applications running uh, on-premise in the data centers that we own and operate. But about two years ago, we made a, a very conscious decision not to increase our uh, data center footprint. And then, uh, in fact, we are actually consolidating our data center footprint. And we wanted instead to leverage the public cloud to be able to uh, move much faster, but also to be able to experiment right with uh, new applications, with new uh, uh, capabilities so that we could ultimately build and deliver to our customers uh, the best possible uh, customer experience, the most user-friendly uh, uh, journeys, uh, and predominantly doing so by building uh, uh, applications for uh, that works on mobile. You know? So we are a mobile first uh, bank, uh, and we are doing so across the board for our uh, personal banking customers. Uh, consumer banking, retail customers, as well as for our uh, uh, corporate customers uh, as well. Excellent, excellent. And it's um, you know it's easy to to sit here now um, that uh, you know you, you've done this uh, you've done this move um, to both the AWS uh, regions and and also onto the uh, onto the hybrid edge products and 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 so on. Um, what I'd like to know, you know, what what were the major challenges you ran into, you know, when you pivoted from that traditional on-premises um, environment to, as you explained, to a, to a cloud-first strategy? Sure. Look, uh, I think, you know, being a financial institution, I guess any customer, but certainly for us, uh, we need to, of course, we want to innovate and we have been innovating uh, uh, pretty rapidly uh, into those new customer experiences. Uh, but security and compliance with uh, regulations and our internal policies is is our top priority right you know we cannot and we must not never uh, compromise uh, on security or compromise you know we, we have a regulatory we have an obligation to meet our uh, compliance uh, obligations as well and it's what you know really the hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, customers that we have expect uh, uh, from fab 
So we need we need really you know to protect our customer data at all costs as well as to meet the regulatory uh, requirements. Um, so I'd say those are the two major uh, uh, areas, uh, you know, security and compliance. You know, uh, make sure that we address those. In the UAE, uh, currently uh, we have, uh, you know, not currently and, and the way we see this playing out, uh, the regulations as well as our internal uh, uh, policies mandate that we have to maintain our customer data uh, in the UAE. Uh, particularly, you know, personal identifiable uh, uh, information. So PII data has to remain uh, in the UAE during uh, all times. And, and also any solution that we uh, build, we are always, uh, we have to maintain uh, compliant, we need to comply with uh, that regulation. Mm. And so how, how did AWS help you solve these challenges? Yeah, it, it helped us because, uh, you know, AWS last uh, year and a half, two years ago, when it launched outposts uh, uh, in the UAE, it really allowed us to, uh, to, you know, build, you know, modern applications while maintaining the data uh, in the country. So uh, we were among the first to adopt outposts here uh, in the UAE. And we leverage outposts because we have the ability to build, uh, to develop, test applications in the public region, uh, in AWS uh, uh, in Bahrain, but using, particularly we have predominantly uh, been containerizing our applications. And then given that Outpost supports EKS, it had made us uh, uh, you know, much simpler for us to develop, test into a public region where, uh, of course, you have a lot of flexibility uh, uh, there a lot of, you know, uh, uh, you know, ability to test, to rebuild the environment. But then we brought uh, in, a, in, a, in a pretty much in a seamless way, right? You know, uh, those workloads from the region, those containerized workloads from the region uh, on outpost. Uh, we, we adopted, uh, you know, we have several uh, outposts located uh, uh, in the UAE, both in Abu Dhabi, uh, as well as in Dubai to meet our, our uh, business continuity requirements. Uh, at the moment, you have several tens of workloads, tens of applications running, and we're pretty much using all of the services, right, that Outpost has to uh, offer, and we are continuously providing feedback to, to AWS to, uh, you know, to, to continue to develop and improve the, the product. So, of course, we leverage uh, EC2. Uh, I mentioned that, you know, we're heavily using EKS, we're containerizing most of our workloads. Uh, in certain cases, we use uh, RDS, uh, also leveraging S3 on Outpost, again, to meet data uh, residency uh, requirements. Uh, but also, I think it's it's really powerful to be able to leverage some of the regional services, AWS services that only exist in the region, to complement the service that exists on Outposts. As an example, right, uh, not only the monitoring piece, but recently we had to build a solution that actually automates the backup of a solution of, of an application that's running on an EC2 instance. So we were able to leverage uh, a systems manager uh, automation from the region uh, as an as a, as a automation tool that actually is orchestrating the uh, operations of the, uh, of the actions that are happening uh, on the outpost itself. So that balance between uh, having workloads on outpost, but also having management services in the region uh, that complement that you know still allows us to meet the regulatory and the compliance obligations, but giving us the ability to do so in a much more, more modern way, uh, it's very very powerful. Yeah, I mean, you, my next question was really going to be around, you know, the value that you derive from Outposts. I think you've you've covered quite a lot of that, um, but I, I will ask, like, you know, maybe we can deep dive a little bit on, you know, the value of Outposts. Like, um, if I could just mention something, like, if do you see that your developers and and others see like a value in being able to have you know, the same APIs, the same tool sets um, as they develop in the cloud and not have to, you know, change to to be like an on-premise uh, legacy type solutions and have these silos. Like, do you see value 
um, from that side as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the increasing developer uh, uh, productivity is, is very tangible and uh, the ability to have uh, this uh, uh, seamless, uh, uh, in, in, you know, operation, right? You know, the ability that, you know, we are able to develop in the public cloud uh, in the region and then we can deploy uh, on outposts. Of course, one needs to architect it properly so that, you know, you're only using the region the service that actually exists on the outpost. But if you are thoughtful about that, then it makes, you know, uh, uh, the, the developer and the, the, the team experience, you know, really, really good one, right? Uh, and also the ability to, uh, you know, to be able, even an outpost, which of course has a defined capacity uh, 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 based on what we, we purchased, right? And, and what has been the blended data center, but the ability to, uh, in a self-service manner, deprovision and reprovision uh, uh, VMs and, and containers also really, uh, um, you know, it's it's a good, it, it really empowers the team, right? You know, the service teams uh, that we have inside the bank uh, to be able to be more self-sufficient and therefore, you know, increases their uh, uh, productivity. Ultimately, right, you know, Jason, the, the value here is to be able to launch uh, customer facing, particularly customer facing applications or digital channels uh, faster uh, and also be able to uh, iterate on them uh, uh, much more rapidly. Right. You know, if you look at, you know, what we are doing in terms of our example or corporate channel, we went from a handful of releases to now making uh, several releases uh, every month, right? And I think in, in the, the trend that we see here is just that we'll continue to uh, accelerate. Yeah, yeah, like you said, uh, speed, you know, is of utmost importance. Um, you know, being able to deploy uh, fast, being able to iterate, you know, all of those benefits that you get, you know, when, when you move to cloud, um, you know, to have these um, these benefits in essentially your own data center as well, extending that cloud to where you need it. You know, that's that's one of the things that we see and it's glad that you bring that up because, um, you know, that's a, a, a huge thing of why we brought some of these hybrid edge products like Outposts to the market. So awesome, thanks for that. So, you know, just let me um, touch on, we, we've talked about what you're doing now. So, but what, what does the future hold? Um, what does the future hold for you? Oh, we're super excited, right, about, you know, where we are heading uh, uh, architecturally, uh, architecture to, to, for the bank, because uh, uh, AWS has now launched the region uh, in the UAE. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and now with the region in the UAE, it would allow us to migrate, we will migrate some of the workloads that we have on our post to the UAE region, so that then we get, you know, uh, uh, you know more scalability, we get you know the ability to use uh, the managed services, uh, even broader set of managed services. You know then you know with native uh, high availability. So we're, we're really you know really excited about it. And I think you know the fact that you will be able to migrate, and we are actually uh, now you know piloting some of these migration exercises. The ability to be able to migrate from outpost. Uh, 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 to the region, right? You know, if, if you look at our, 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 our journey, right? And that's, I think it's the beauty of this consistency between region and outpost is that uh, when you did AWS, you didn't have a region in the UAE, we were built, we developed and tested it into the region in Bahrain. Then we had to deploy on outpost. Now uh, we're gonna be able to take some of those workloads that we choose to do so and then migrate them uh, into the uh, UAE region. And, you know, from experience point of view, from the, the teams that are actually building uh, and operating those applications, although those are three different environments, they're effectively, they are consistent, right? And mm -hmm. that ability to go uh, in a pretty seam seamless way, uh, it, it's very, very powerful, right? Uh, yeah. And it allows us to, as I mentioned, right, you know, to continue to innovate for our customers, you know, leverage the additional services that the region uh, uh, have. Fantastic. So it's been it's been really it's been really interesting. And thank you very much for you know sharing Fab's journey 
um, with us today, Santiago. Like this is fantastic, and it's been a, a project that um, you know I've been very, very proud to be be part of as well, and to see this journey um, of of using one of being one of the first customers, in fact, to be using outposts, getting that feedback of you know you actually using outposts. You you never know, you know, when customers start using it, what feedback you're going to get, and the feedback has been fantastic. And the partnership has been fantastic as well. And now, like you said, your journey with the new region in the UAE opening, this is a, a, a fantastic future um, and one where, you know, hybrid allows you to, to move back and forth, you know, your workloads from a region to outpost where it makes sense. And this is um, really interesting to see uh, what the bank does with this in the future. Um, so, yeah, it's been fantastic this morning. Uh, it's amazing to hear how uh, Fab has been able to accelerate the di uh, digital transformation and deliver new experiences for mobile payments um, and banking um, while meeting some of the, the compliance and data residency issues that you, you've mentioned. So once again, thank you, Santiago, and uh, we'll cut back to Seattle. Thank you.